Welcome to PartialArc.com. <laughs> Don't do that. In the grim darkness of the far future, there is only war. And two idiots join the Inquisition. Dark Heresy! Welcome back to another episode of Dark Heresy. As the Imperial Scribe of this vessel, I am flattered to, well, to be here. And I wanted to take a moment and thank some important people. You see, a little while ago, acolyte Andrew Dickinger, former acolyte Jay Jones, and a few others made a board game. A board game called Mortals Descent of the Gods. And, if you don't know, they managed to get it funded on Kickstarter. Who knew? And sure, they did some work to make it happen, but the big reason they succeeded was because of you. Because of our listeners who reached out and helped pledge, big and small, to get the board game made. To me, and to all of us, this is something truly tremendous and worth thanking. So thank you. Thank you so very much. On top of this, it seems that Andrew, Jay, Daniel, and a few others prepared some personal thank yous for a few who pledged at a specific level. I'll share those with you now. Enjoy. Just Eric, thanks so much. Chuck Shaw, thank you. You're pretty cool. Lisbeth and Morton Keeland, thank you so, so much. Kathy Polites, thank you. Raku Ferret, thanks. Tony, mortal before it went mainstream, Pepitone, thanks a lot. Mark and Emily Karlacek, thank you so much. And I'm sorry you've been infested with the warp. I hope that clears up, maybe like an ointment. Daz, thank you so, so much. Ryan Duffy, thank you so much. Matt Matt, your name is your name twice, and that's interesting. Also, thank you so, so much. Robert Moorhead, thanks a bunch, buddy. Wouder, Herald of the Cantate Gods. Thank you so much. Also, how is it being a deity? Sounds neat. Well, he's a herald. Oh, you're right. <laughs> Commissar does. Thank you so, so much, and congratulations on leading legions and legions of warriors. Jason Dennis, thank you so, so much. Hope you enjoyed that just as much as I enjoyed documenting the many adventures of Andrew Dickinger, Shepard Toombs, and their servo skull companion, Daniel Fernandez. You see... When you last left them, our boys were knee-deep in royal murder mystery and had interviewed two of the three likely candidates to take the throne of Eisenholm, with only one remaining. This final candidate, Baroness Rendo, has invited them to dinner. What kind of political intrigue awaits our two heroes? And what of this ghastly murder? Let's find out. All right, Daniel, I've turned you back on. I guess we're getting ready for this dinner. All right, do we need to dress up a little bit? Well, I'm certainly dressing up. Don't you like my fine bow tie and obviously imperial black and white? Uh, I, I was going to have a little bow tie. Uh, it's sort of a clip on. Oh, my goodness, you do have a little bow tie. Yes. You know, I can teach you to tie a bow tie if you want to learn. It's a very specific art. I, I'm sure it is, but uh, I, I'm i fine with the clip-on. You never it's, know when you could wear a nice bow tie. It would be adorable, but I think I'm already adorable enough. Mm. Uh, there's an inherent problem with... He has no neck. What are you talking about? It's, it's right below his head. It's sort of on my chin. Well, I mean, yes, but I mean, it still looks I mean, adorable. Uh, yeah, I mean, I made the bow tie for him. It's magnetic. It just, it just detaches, but he has no neck to wrap... Uh, moving on. I'm not getting dressed up. I'm just going as I am. But you would look great in a bow tie. You sure you don't want one? I always bring spares. You sure? Multiple questions from that comment, but no, I think well, I'm look, fine. Well, look, bow ties are perfect. Look, sometimes you wear them to dinner parties, and you can use them to strangle people. They're excellent. I, I'm, I'm quite... That is an advantage over this clip-on. Exactly. Uh, more like, you know, I keep saying clip-on. It's more like magnet. On. Fun rule. That's how you can always spot a true assassin at a dinner party if they're wearing a real bow tie. Clip-ons are obviously much easier and much more practical. I 
feel like everybody wear, would wear a real bow tie normally. Not usually. They wear clip-ons. They're practical. It's difficult to master a bow tie tie because as soon as you know how to master one, you can kill people easily. It's it's odd. I don't know if they wear a lot of bow ties on the fashion on this planet, but maybe that's more of a, a Malfi fashion. Yeah, sort of well, thing. I'm yes. happy to bring some of that Malfi fashion to this. Yes. I just want to say backwater planet because it's more frozen. Frozen water planet. <laughs> okay. I mean, I guess we can just go. Oh, you're th- just going to wear that, yeah. your robe. This is my clothes. And the giant mechanical arm on your back. It's attached to my spine, so yes. Oh, yes. Hmm. We, we could should dress it up. We could put bow ties on your mechanical arm. We should get you a tailor. We should, like, tailor some good... Because I'm, I'm thinking, like, you should look better, man. But, like, you can't just get off-the-rack clothes with that mechanical arm. What, you arm. mean, like, I need, like... like Throwing some serious robes? fashion shade from the servo skull. These robes, I like it. These robes are distressed, okay? It's <laughs> it's the new thing. I believe there's blood stains on some or most parts of these robes. Yes. Have you not washed them? I mean, they're very distressed. They were red originally, right? Right? Those robes? Yes. They have okay. different shades of red now. Okay. And, I mean, they, they've seen shit, man. Yes, clearly. Also, there, But they uh, haven't seen a dry cleaner. There also appears to be some literal shit on there. There's no literal shit on there. I mean, I would have noticed that. Okay. I've got, you know, probably better olfactory senses than you guys do. Mm, fair well, enough. I don't have any. Well, I mean. Do I? I don't you, remember. Have you activated the features on your new bow tie? Oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. So many features. So many things that this could be in later scenarios that we'll call out randomly. Oh, goodness. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's uh, let's head on over and uh, have dinner, I guess. It uh, seems seems good. Yes. yes. Yeah. I guess um, I'll knock on the door. Nobody's coming. What? Baroness Rendo, do you think... Do you think what... On time too much? Do you think with these barons that are very big on fashionably late? Would she still be, like, sleeping or taking a shower or do, playing chess with a robot? And I knock with my mechanical arm. It's okay, it's, it's louder. Yeah. All right. Uh, the uh, Actually, make perception checks. Oh, interesting. No. <laughs> I failed horribly. 75. All right. Eight, no, 86. No, off the nobody's coming there. to the door. Um, I'm going to try the knob. Okay. Uh, it is locked. Well, this is quite a tricky situation. Do you think she might be in danger? I mean, she did invite us here. Like, should mm. we just, like, make so sure? So what you're saying is I should break in? Can you pick the lock without damaging it? I potentially could. I am pretty <laughs> good with these little fingers, if you give me a few moments. I'm, I thought you were good with your fingers, like, killing, not actually well, yes. getting into place. But what is breaking into a door if not murdering the lock inside it? Wow. Wow. Here we go. So <laughs> yeah. I'm going to try a sleight of hand. Yes. See if I can get inside. Do, 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 do. Just wow. Ooh, 74. <laughs> <laughs> and that was... Yes, he, he hums a specific tune when he's trying to crack locks. Um, um, what kind of lock is on this door? It's a basic old timey mechanical lock. So I can't tech use this. No, you cannot tech use this. All right. Uh, it's a it's a big wooden door. Uh, you know, it, it theoretically could be kicked down if you really want to. You know, you he, could knock again if you'd like. I he, don't know. He fails horribly. <laughs> I'm gonna push him aside. Mm, very tough customer. I'll have to think about murdering this lock later. Um, and when it's then, sleeping. Even though I have a minus 10 to tech use and terrible agility, I'm going to go for it. Tech use? You, you don't or, have minus 10 to tech or, use. Sorry, minus 10 to sleight of hand. And well, that's right. This door is wooden. It's the yes. opposite of what you can... <laughs> it's your greatest enemy. I believe it's actually... Isn't it security to... I believe it is security to unlock the door, not sleight of hand. Sleight of hand is like try to trick somebody and mm. like you so uh i'm gonna push tombs aside and attempt to use security to unlock the stores and sleight of hand isn't even the right way to do it excellent <laughs> um and i am trained in security but uh, that's about as far as it goes yeah well good enough dang i just missed not good enough yeah i needed a 38 and i got a 43 so that sucks okay all right well that didn't work knock even louder <laughs> 
You know, curious, Daniel, is there a way to get into this room not in this immediate vicinity? Is there possibly an outside window? There actually, there is an outside window. There's not a balcony because it's too cold for anybody to want to go out, but there is a window. Isn't it like a sheer rock face? It, it is a sheer rock face, yes. Excellent. That's the kind of environments that I thrive in. Be right back! <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay. Um, so, all right. I'm going to kick the door open. Okay. What a... Uh, do I just yeah, like what, what check are you going to make? I guess I just like strength check Yeah, it? just make a basic strength check to kick open the door, and then we'll we'll get back to Tombs who's trying to climb along, along the outside. Oh, at least I get a bonus to this because yeah. of my mechanical leg. No, I'm going to use my reroll. <laughs> that succeeds. I needed a th oh, 34, and I got a 31. So, so you, used your, you used your fate point to kick the door down? No, I used the re-roll for my leg. Oh, your leg let you re-roll. Yes, because oh, okay. I requisitioned the, a few adventures ago to get a high-quality leg. Okay, so you kick the door down. Well, as he kicks the door down, uh, I'm looking inside, and I'm just seeing there's a big dining room table that's set up for like a big meal, and everyone is passed out around it. Good, good. Tombs! Tombs! Meanwhile, Tombs... <laughs> Cut to outside a rock face. I've stepped outside one of the windows nearby. All right, you're gonna need to make uh, an athletics check to climb on the uh, on the sheer rock face. Do you have any tools that are helping you with this? Can I use acrobatics instead of athletics? <sighs> uh, I guess if you're trying to, because I think in some scenarios you can use. Acrobatics uh, here's what I'll say: of uh, instead of climbing on it, you are actually literally just trying to leap from each of the windows to the windows to grab it, which is a- Wait, are there any like large poles outside? Like uh, like that old data slate Prince of Persia and I can just swing from pole to pole? There, there's a little bit of stuff out there, yes. I mean, where are they hanging all those big black drapes from? There's gotta Ex be poles exactly. out there. Exactly, maybe you're gonna uh, go to uh, like cut down a drape. Yeah, slide down a drape. Just be aware that uh, athletics means that you're actually climbing, so you're holding on, which is a little bit safer. I mean, it's not, neither is safe. You're over a gigantic drop. Um, acrobatics, you're you're jumping around a little bit more, which might be riskier. But you know, you have a long lot of time to grab onto the uh, the rock face again yeah. if you if you fail. This will work. This will work great. I love that I uh, went on like a ten minute platforming adventure while you just kicked in a door. Does this just end with uh, just like tombs dead right here? Just, and just dead. End, I guess from soloing it from here from here on. <laughs> maybe maybe I'll have to take over another character. Um, so I failed my first jump. <laughs> Oh, too far! Oh, and, uh, Jesus and, uh, I fall down the first ball, and uh, I guess I try to grab the next yes. cloth. <laughs> okay, I grab that one. Oh okay. wait, no, I miss it. I'm gonna do. A, I'm gonna do a fate point reroll. Oh my god! <laughs> All right, that's good. That was a twenty-eight. <laughs> I. Th All right, so you were I trying. I thought that seven was a two before. So you I was were like, oh, twenty-four. Nope. You uh, you were jumping. You were trying to perch above the, the the main window that would lead into the dining room where you were going to meet the Baroness. Uh, you actually fall right in front of that window. Actually, Andrew, maybe you even see a body like fly down. So just, you just say like tombs where are you? Say ah! <laughs> but uh, your hand just barely catches the uh, the windowsill. Nice. Um, and you are there. Uh, but you're gonna it's gonna take you a second to climb up and like That's actually fun. get in also you'll have to break down the window meanwhile I, I'm going to take a perception check first to see if I notice that he went by the window okay because I'm assuming like this is like fairly well insulated yeah so uh, a plus 10 though to notice him okay <laughs> I don't notice him go by the window. okay that's fine uh, so you turn around just at the moment I fly past the window. Granted, I did just kick open a door, and there are passed out people all over yeah, the place. Yeah, he, he, he's more noticing the passed out bodies as opposed to the person uh, flying out the window. Also, you notice that, uh, well, make another perception check for me. Okay. No, I am just rolling straight 70 pluses. Good. All right. So, Tombs, uh, you could roll, uh, as you're sort of climbing up, you can roll a perception check for me. It will be at minus 10 because you're outside the window. That's fair. Yeah. Mm, so close. If it wasn't a minus 10, I would have got it. Fail. Andrew, you notice that all of a sudden that blood is seeping from like the throat of one of the uh, the uh, people that was sitting at the table, um, but you're realizing like that just happened. Like somebody just cut their like neck. Like blood is still coming out. Like, does he see the throat just get cut, or 
or he's seeing blood still coming out of the throat. It's unclear. You didn't pass your perception check. Um, but it So people could still be getting murdered while we're in this room. Well, I'm not in the room. Okay, um, uh, so uh, so you're going to need to tell me what I do, what you do. Um, I'm going to put on my special glasses. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's probably a good idea. And I'm going to scan the room. Okay. I'm going to reroll that. <laughs> It's just progressively getting worse. Like it went, I it literally rolled seventy four, then seventy six, then seventy nine, now eighty one, then re rolled into a ninety two. Like um, just Tombs getting worse. patches into the uh, the com link with everybody. Andrew, what's um what's going on up there? Did everybody's pass out. Uh, somebody's throat just magically slit itself. I think. All what right. do you mean magically just slit itself? Do you want to try to break in the window here? So I'm outside the window yeah. and I do want to try to break in. Okay. Uh, I guess I well I can either. Uh, you could just kick it open. Yeah, I'm if just you, gonna you kick it just open. You could just blast it open or kick can it. Can I open sleight of hand my way in? <laughs> it's not sleight of hand. It's security. <laughs> Is it? Damn it. Slide right. of hand is like trying to trick a person. There's no person here. It's a window. All right. I'm just going to kick the door or the window in then. <laughs> yeah, you'll just shatter it. So I just shatter the window and step inside. Wait, what do you mean? I'm sorry. I got into the static. You said you think someone was just murdered? You're, you're in the room. All right. Uh, so you guys both did an action. You now see a second throat is cut. Uh, it seems to be going up the right side of the table. See? See? Hold on, I've got an idea. Um, Daniel, you know that strangely unconventional fire extinguisher you have beneath you? Can you blast that into this room for me? Uh, sure? Um... So basically to blast your <laughs> fire extinguisher in the room to potentially yes. outline no, the shape of an invisible... O over all of the guests. Over the, t the table. Okay, uh, I, this seems very gross. <laughs> Uh, you see, it was like a small, very shimmering of a light that was slightly different. You didn't quite notice it before, but there is definitely some sort of uh, bipedal figure uh, about uh, human-sized now moving around covered in fire extinguisher juice. Nice. That we... is going around. That is now moving to a third throat to can slit. Can we make like a better perception check now that we can kind of see the outline? Like to get an idea of what this thing could be. Uh, is it? Does it look invisible? Like it's basically some sort it's of. It's basically invisible. Yes. Uh, you said vaguely humanoid. What you can make out is it has two arms and two legs and a head. Okay. So that's what I mean by humanoid. I kind of feel like I'm gonna open fire on this thing. Of course. I mean, look, you got to give credit where credit is due. I haven't used an invisible suit in quite a long time, but they are very, very helpful. I do appreciate the, uh, the attempt, though. Okay, so I'm gonna shoot at this thing. Okay, that makes sense. Do you... Look, game recognizes game. All right. Do you uh, do I have any negatives? Uh, you're at minus ten to hit it. It would be significantly more if it wasn't covered in fire extinguisher. While you're like getting Foam. your guns out, um, excuse me, invisible person, we can see you. If uh, you put down your weapons and your blades and come quietly, we can discuss this like proper assassins. Any response? Before no, I... no response. Does All it right. does it look like it's still moving to another person? It's moving as if it, it it's completely. It doesn't notice us. Yet. Or maybe it notices you and it's it's trying to just continue doing its job. I don't know. I, I assume it probably notices, but... Yeah. Okay. You're not... You, neither of you were subtle. He kicked in the door. You <laughs> broke, in the, broke window. in the window. And now he's covered in fire extinguisher. Yes. So, I mean... All right. Well, I'm in a fire at him. Okay. That's a one, baby. A natural one? Yeah, that is a natural one. Nice. All right. It rolled a 96 on its dodge. So, uh, you hit it. It's semi-auto. That hits with all three. Okay. Yeah, it's a, I'm shooting with my bolt gun. I mean, that's the weapon I have. Oh, is so. that the weapon you were going to use? It's the only ranged weapon I have. Makes sense. So, uh, all right, here we go for damage. 25 damage, pen 4. Oh, wow. Uh, to what part? I guess that's the head, right? Uh, well, I can actually call shot, but I guess it's invisible, so I can't. Well, you rolled a 1, so it'd be the head anyway. It'd be the head, yeah. The target ceases to exist in any <laughs> tangible way, entirely <laughs> turning into a bright red mist. Mm, bright reddish green mist that uh, spreads through the surrounding area. They cannot get any deader than this. <laughs> um, the uh, unspeakably appalling manner in which the target was killed affects the target's allies. Oh, no, there are no target's allies in, in nearby. Um, so you just headshot this thing, just one shot, blast. And, and you killed it so bad that if it had any friends nearby, they have to make a check to not be terrified. <laughs> I, I imagine literally it just started, it started with the center mass and it just went up the stomach to the chest to the head and just. 
Oh my goodness! Very nice shot, old boy! Uh, well, uh... Didn't... I meant to leave something behind. Shit. Well, let's investigate whatever this was. So we go around the other end of the table. By the way, does everybody else at the table, do they still look like they're dead, but they haven't had their throat slit? Well, you'll have to examine them a little bit closer. Okay. Um, the Baroness is at the table? The Baroness is sitting at the head of the table. Okay. Is she have her, does she have her throat slit? She does not. I'm going to oh. go over to her and medicate her. Okay. Wow, man. It's terrible. While you're checking on the Baroness, I'm going to oh. go around and, and check on the assassin. Okay. Jeez, even with my plus 20, I still fail. Man. All right. Whatever this thing is... Its skin is still like sort of translucent and invisible, but it's uh, whatever the bl it's covered in blood and fire extinguisher and ooze <laughs> and all sorts of gross stuff. Um, just sort of poking at it a little bit. You've never seen anything quite like it. Well, maybe you have. Do you have any knowledge skills? I do. I have knowledge of the underworld. Uh, okay. Make an underworld check on this. My intelligence is a 31, and I rolled a 22. So I have possibly seen something like this before. This appears to be some sort of mutation of some sort that this being has. This appears to be a mutated human that uh, has sort of invisibility built into its genes. Mm. You have heard of these things before. Uh, th this is a rare genetic mutation, but when it happens, they tend to become very popular in certain underworld circles. So tombs, tombs. Like, it, it was cool that I killed that thing, right? Yes, it definitely was. Um, it's unfortunate. I thought this was a professional, but it turns out this is just a mutant with some sort of translucent type of invisible skin. Very interesting. And uh, it's becoming more and more visible as the, the longer that it's dead. Like, its skin is slowly fading into existence. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's uh, just sort of a gray, chitinous skin covered in pustules and stuff, too. Ew. Yeah. Gross. Disgusting. Gross. Yes. Uh, but you do know that uh, while these creatures, these sort of mutants, are sometimes independent, they are popularly hired um, by some criminal syndicates that are willing to work uh, with mutants. Which are not all of them, but some are willing to work with mutants, and they're willing to hire mutants that have... Just checking the body, do yeah. I notice any specific, like, a note, kill this person at this time? No, nothing at Signed, all. Signed, the real murderer. <laughs> also, you notice that their hands are, like, particularly sharp claws, mm. uh, and that appears to be what they were using. They were using their claw hands. Yeah, to, to do the, it was the using, killing. It was using its claw hands? Interesting. Yes. So these are highly valued mutants that are used for specific assassinations. Or competitors, as I like to say. Better to have one less out there in the world mucking up my contracts. Well, so you failed your Medicaid check on the Baroness. Yeah. You do know that she appears to still be alive, at least. Yeah. Okay. But so uh, meant, besides that, you don't know if there's any poison or anything I like was, that. Yeah, anyway. I was trying to counteract it. So yeah. can I attempt to counteract it on another person to, like, discover what type of thing it is? And then maybe that's... Uh, I suppose so, yeah. If you just want to start sticking your needles into people and, and figuring it out. I mean, that's, yeah. I've got to take samples. That's what it's there for. Okay. You going to do it on one of the other living ones or one of the dead ones? I'm going to do it on one of the dead ones. Okay. It's your call. Yeah. I'm, just... I'm going to do it on one of the dead ones. Okay. That's a 100. So that <laughs> fails. <laughs> Do you just kill it? <laughs> like, what happens well, it, to the 100 when you're trying to take a sample? Well, it's a dead person, so. Oh. I assume I, you break one of your... Um, your things. And there's a malfunction in my servo arm that takes samples and it literally just plunges straight through the face. Nice. Oh, goodness. Ugh. I pull it out real, even though I don't actually feel anything on that arm. Like a piston fires and like, your thing overshoots yes. in the head. And was like, no, not, not battle mode. I thought I fixed that, damn it. <laughs> now, there is a comical moment that is just you trying to pull your thing out and you're just dragging the body around the room as you're trying to get this well, thing out of its face. As you're occupied with the mutant body, I keep like, like, like panic, look up, look down, look up, look down. It's all in the background. It's just me like looking at this mutant. You just see you in the background trying to get this you're arm like, out of a hmm, person's face. Hmm, a mutant. And I'm like, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> oh, so when I kind of go through the, the body, is there like any clothes or like any things or materials no, it was, they have on it? it was naked. Oh, gross. Yeah. yeah. Come on, assassin. You've got to have some sort of shame. Well, if it has invisible skin, it can't wear clothes. Yes, I understand, <laughs> Daniel, but still. Um, so I'd like to look around the room. Who are the people at the table that were killed? 
Do um, we recognize any the of their faces? Two that, uh, you don't recognize any of these people. They all seem to be relatively uh, hardened-looking... Uh, uh, I guess warriors is a pretty good description of them. They they have scars or whatever on their face. They seem to all be battle uh, veterans. Battle veterans of some sort. Hmm. Yes. Uh, besides that, uh, they are relatively well dressed. Not quite as well dressed as the uh, the servants and the people that you saw in uh, Woke Gamer's uh, quarters. But uh, these seem to be of uh, some sort of noble or at least important. And I'm uh, assuming folks. the Baroness is still in her armor. The Baroness is still in her armor. Yes. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Wait, does it look like they were already having dinner without us? Uh, looks like it. Maybe they started without us. That's not very proper. Wow, that's... Kind you of... know what? It probably is okay because it looks like the dinner was poison. Yes, right? obviously, Daniel, but still. Or what maybe if it, it was wasn't a poison poisoning? gas. I don't know. Oh, but... you made an interesting suggestion. I'm going to check the food. Oh, okay. That just seemed like an obvious one, right? Well, if yes, they were eating I, it, that was all... going to be my next move, but yes, let's check the food. Okay. I'm, I'm not trying to take away the investigation from you guys. I just thought that was... Listen, Daniel, you're a skull. You're basically one, almost 100% brain. Like, it's just... You're going to be smarter than me sometimes. I just accept that. Okay. Not smarter than me, Daniel. D- absolutely smarter than him. He, he climbed outside the building and... Did you... You kicked in the window. Couldn't you have just opened the window? I saw you had already kicked in the door. Who cares at this point? Did, I mean, okay, I, I guess. But now it's fucking cold in here. It is very cold in here. Sorry. <laughs> oh, no, okay. I do actually pass that because of my plus 20 on my Medicaid. I just saw 56, and I was like, you got to be kidding me. Yeah. It doesn't appear that they had actually gotten too deep in the actual food. They were having uh, drinks beforehand. So maybe they hadn't really started without us. They were just having drinks. But uh, it appears that there seems to be some sort of chemical compound in the wine that everyone was drinking. You know, I'm just going to assume that they were, you know, just patiently waiting for us. So clearly somebody got into the drinks to poison them, to knock them out, and then this assassin was going to sneak in and slit all their throats. Oh, here's a question. Where are the servers? Also, there's one servant whose corpse is in the corner. Oh, so the servant who would have potentially served the wine has been Yeah, you didn't notice them originally. You... We're bad on your initial perception checks, yeah. but uh, in the in the corner of the room is a servant who has also had their throat uh, cut. Shit, mm. um, that may have been the person responsible for the wine. Um, Do you think that the assassin killed the other potential assassin or accomplice to cover their tracks? I don't even know if they thought they knew they were an accomplice. I think they uh, maybe they did. I mean, why? Because the servant might not have known that the wine was poisoned. Yeah, but then why kill him? They'll kill him because why not? Clearly this fellow was going around and killing everybody in the room. Well, I guess you'd have to kill them because the servant wouldn't have drank the wine. Think of it this way. If you wanted to pin it on the servant, wouldn't you leave the servant alive and, you know, have something to do with the poisoned wine? But he killed the servant anyway. No, I think that that more pins it on the servant because that's the servant's the one who wouldn't drink the wine, and therefore you have to kill them, which means they can't talk, and they are the ones that served it. Right, but if you wanted to pin it on the servant, what you do is you kill everybody but the servant, the servant wakes up, and he's the only one alive. Pin it on that fellow. I don't know. Knock them out. Knock them over the back of the head. I guess Sleeping dart. He is in, He or it was invisible. Could have done that. I it's interesting, know. though. So this clearly a bunch of people were getting murdered. So there's a very real chance it was one of the other barons. Because obviously we know from Woke and Walker that they're not, you know, not particularly interested in getting second place in this whole who will rule the planet. Scenario. Yeah, I mean, there definitely seems to be a game of the throne going. Mm, yes, quite a gaming of throning, but what to make of it? Um, well, so with my Medicaid check on the wine, discovering the yeah. agent that was used, can I develop an antidote? Uh, yes, it's going to take you a little bit of time to synthesize uh, an antidote, uh, but if you can, uh, what tools do you have to do that? Well, I have my full med kit. Oh, you have your full med kit? Okay. And I have a med kit and I have uh, the full, uh, almost entirely trained Medicaid. Okay, okay. So I, I bet you could actually um, put together an, an antidote. Uh, depending on your degrees of success, will determine how effective the antidote is. But uh, I'll give you plus 10 because you're able to identify the kind of poison. Okay. Why. So another Medicaid check with a plus 10? Yes. I pass one full degree of success. All right. Uh, you have enough to uh, distribute to everyone an antidote to whatever happened. Uh, it will be a slower-acting antidote, or 
you can have one that is not for everybody, but a, a faster, a more immediate answer. My question is, is it possible for me to do enough of an almost immediate wake up to the Baroness and then distribute it so it's much slower for everybody else, but at least like wakes her up? fairly quickly yeah i guess or i yeah. can just be like manufacturing more and then tell them what is required are we trying to wake up the baroness like now yeah i'm trying to wake her up like right now i feel like she's probably gonna take a little bit of time to wake up well i mean i meant more wake her up faster than everybody else i feel okay. like it's more important for her to get the bigger dose okay i don't i don't know if that uh, sure yeah i mean it's up to okay. you yeah that that's that's totally fine yeah oh also while you're doing that um security is rushing over uh, yes, you know, it's interesting. I, in most of these scenarios, will kill people and then leave. I don't have to stick around, so... No, we have to stick around. W yes, obviously. So, we're going to have to make this pretty clear pretty fast. I would suggest maybe putting your bolt gun down, hands in the um, air. Yeah. Everybody drop it! Yep. Drop it! Hello, everyone. Nice to see you. Um, we're in the... We, we came in here. We've rescued the rest of the guests. We're with the Inquisition. There's okay. a strange mutant person on the ground with clawed hands. Evidence. He blew his face off. Everything's fine. He also killed one of the servant and two of the guests. We're also pretty sure when he came in here, he smashed the door and the window. Not sure why. The pretty shitty assassin. Also, the hole in that person's face was totally done by it and in an act of desperation. There are 15 armed guards uh, who have uh, run in. Uh, Las rifles just sort of trained on you. And uh, walking in behind them sort of uh, quickly, but uh, trying to keep a sense of dignity is Lee Strahd. What is going on here? Okay, I have, they were... You were saying things very quickly. Slow down and explain what has happened. Is the Baroness okay? All right, the tombs. Let me just say this for quickly. They're, they've been poisoned. Well, they've, they've passed out from an agent in the wine. I'm going to inject the Baroness. It will wake her up more quickly. It's a counter agent. Ooh, I mean, you could just do it without, like. I'm like, yeah, like good, good. My arms are up because I, I'm gonna keep my is arms up. Is your servo arm and in my here servo the arm will is up, but it will go. D my regular arms will still be up as the servo arm injects. So, like, good, good, good. Uh, you're gonna need to make some sort of roll to make him not. To immediately shoot you as you're injecting something into the Baroness. Okay, I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna say something to him that may improve my role. Wink, wink. Listen, Lee, Lee. You are watching me do this. You could just gun me down if it kills her. I'm telling you, as an agent of the Inquisition, this will help her. Okay, make a roll. I, I fail. Nope, nope. Do not, do not try it. Do not. Men, men, if he moves any of his three arms, you turn him, into, you, you light him up. Tombs, me out here. Yes, um, listen, Lee, I think we got off on the wrong foot the other day. Um, or the same, is it the same day? I'm losing track it's of time. It's the end of the day. Yes, fair enough. Listen, Lee, um, I think we've had a very interesting situation here. We came in politely to attend a fine dinner, and there was this translucent mutant man going around and killing everyone. What now, a translucent mutant? What the hell are you talking about? Well, you know, his skin was all invisible-like. That's how he was in here slitting throats. Look, I don't need to get into the details. All you need to know is Andrew and I came in here, dispatched the terrible assassin, and were just moments away from rescuing the Baroness, and honestly, as a consulting assassin, I've seen agents like this before. We could wait a few more minutes and she might die, and, um... Well, you and all these soldiers will bear witness to the one man who didn't try to save the Baroness when she could die in, I think, moments. So, listen, we can all stand around with our servo arms and hands in the air and let this man over here not save her, and we'll all remember it. Certainly, whoever takes the throne next will certainly remember it. But, you know, Lee, well, let's just follow protocol. Let's all keep our hands in the air and not save the Baroness. All of you soldiers remembered me saying that? Perfect. Okay, you can make. You need to make a roll for that. <laughs> My deception roll. Yes. I have, I have points in deceive. That's a thirteen. I saw the ten. I was like, yes. All right. <laughs> Lee. Do all the soldiers like kind of look at Lee a little bit? Yeah, they they're looking at Lee. Some of them are pointing their weapon. They're like looking around. Uh, one of them is just uh, has made eye contact with the. Uh, he essentially headless uh, guy that Andrew got done uh, <laughs> examining and has like lost their lunch uh, or dinner at this point. Eh, these guys have already eaten their dinner. Now, of course, the other side of this could be you, Lee Strahd, who came in here heroically, 
and helped us administer the solution to save the Baroness and potentially get yourself promoted and all of you soldiers as well. But look, I'm just a mere consulting assassin. I don't know how this could play if out. If the Baroness doesn't live through this, you're going to be thrown in jail to be executed. Certainly. Seems okay. like a win for you either way. Okay. Good, good now? Good? He nods. Okay, I'm going to keep my regular arms up, but my servo arm is going to inject her. Okay. Uh, you detect a change in her breathing almost immediately. Okay. Um, but she is uh, she is not yet conscious. So I, I, I yeah. figure because it's more important for her to be revived immediately, I'm going to give her, like, the majority of the dose. Okay. To, to counteract the agent as much as possible. Okay. Um, you know, not a lethal amount, but, like, enough to, like, really strongly... Okay. And I'm gonna. I think it's it's safe to say because I didn't I didn't get that didn't get it that well that that's like all I could produce for now. Okay. Congratulations, Lee. You're now a hero as well as you fellow fine soldiers. Um, I think uh, I have a couple questions actually. If you could help us out now that we've established that we're not murderers, could you potentially point me in the direction of um, who kind of prepares and distributes the wine in this fine castle? That uh, that's the kitchen staff. Hmm, I don't, excellent. Yes. Uh, d- wait, so explain to me what's going on here, and you could have a chance to explain yeah, it. We, we don't need we, to walk through the no, whole no, thing. No, no, we, yes. we run through yeah. uh, Tombs and Andrew give yeah. uh, him a full rundown. Okay. Okay, that sounds yeah, so crazy. It, but was the, it was the wine, like, so that's why we need the kitchen staff. Okay, we need to lock down the kitchen. All kitchen staff needs to be uh, detained. Uh, don't let anybody out of the kitchen at the moment. You got that, Adler? Lock down the kitchens. You got it. Excellent. Well, we should make our way to the kitchens, investigate and speak to the staff. Clearly somebody was doodling around in that wine. Has the Baroness started to wake up yet? Not really, no. Uh, I mean, she's, she seems a little woozy. She's sort of coming to. Um, honestly, she's coming to actually a little faster than you expected. Uh, she seems to have a pretty... A strong constitution, but this was a pretty uh, intense dose of some sort of knockout poison. Yeah. Uh, yes. I think we're going to need to give her a few minutes, or at least a few hours, to gain her, um, you know, all faculties. But Lee, could you do us a favor? I mean, obviously, it goes without saying. You're going to need to leave a regiment here to protect the Baroness. Maybe double layer, just because at this point, I think her life is most certainly in danger. We need to move her somewhere where the window hasn't been broken open. Uh, and we'll, we'll keep her locked down along with the And Could you give our uh, team uh, the antidote that you have? Yeah, and like an ampule that yeah. hatches from my servo arm, and I hand it to them. This is the r- remaining. It's not enough for a full dose, but you should be able to synthesize some in a couple of hours. Okay, we'll, uh, we'll have the, the doctors look at that, I guess. I say specifically to Lee, I go over and put my arm around him, and I'm like, Lee, you're going to need like tier three scanners, man. Like this thing was super fucking invisible. I don't know what tiers you are talking about, but okay. Lee, do you happen to have a lot of fire extinguishers here in your ice castle? I know it's a strange question, but just curious if you have anything like that. We'll be on the lookout for invisible things. Okay. Yes, arm your men with fire extinguishers. We've got to bring these bad boys down. Yeah, I mean, like, put her in Do you think there's other ones? Well, possibly. If there was one, they might have a second or third. You know, they're very likely going to try again. He's he's right. Tombs is right. Like, if there's one, there could always be more. Huh. Here's the thing. Oh, goodness. We're on okay, a- okay. We'll, we'll keep the situation safe. Uh, we need to also get in touch with the other nobles. Uh, make sure that they're aware that uh, just w- put the whole castle on lockdown. Put the whole castle on lockdown. I would do this, though, Lee. I had an idea, Tombs. Fair enough. Then I think we should. Uh, the three of us should huddle up for a second. Up, all right. So I gather us together. And I'm like, it feels like home again. Th- what? Three, what three what? meaning me, Daniel, or or, or well, me, well, uh, Daniel, Lee. Uh, Lee. Lee comes in, but Daniel, oh. you're always there. Right? I'm always there. Yes, you're always there. You're oh. always welcome. All right. Daniel. Yes, here we are, huddled together. What? All what's right. the? What's the plan? All right. Don't say this to your guards, but I think we should not report the status of the Baroness to the other nobles. Interesting. So kind of like a gambit. Pretend that she might actually be dead. You no, know, Lee. I, I know you might be against this, but it's it's absolutely possible that the assassin was hired by one of the other nobles to dispatch her. That's crazy, but uh, I... Is it really that crazy? So you want you want me to lie to the other nobles? Yes. We want you to omit facts. Meaning like when they say, how is she doing? You should say, I certainly don't know. 
We just can't know for sure. Or, mm. or, the, uh, uh, and maybe on. frown In, a single tear if you could produce one of those. Even, or even, you could like really omit the shit out of it by saying, you know, there's been an attempt on the Baroness's life, and when they ask you the status of the Baroness, you say, I cannot say by order of the Inquisition. Uh, okay. Uh, mm. Does that not work as well? I've uh, never done this before. Uh, maybe just lie. Just directly say she's dead. I don't really want to lie. You're gonna need to convince him to lie. <laughs> I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna try to charm him. Oh, that was a bad roll. Even with all my pluses. Uh, mm, I think this is a pretty good gambit. I think this is worth a fate point. Okay. I, I think so. Yeah, I'm gonna reroll because I'm actually pretty good at this. That was a pretty terrible roll. Oh, that's a 16 without all of my modifiers. <laughs> so okay, yeah. So basically, listen. Lee. As a hero, as someone that has come in here and saved the Baroness, I know that a man of your status as a hero works a little bit outside the regulations, a little bit outside the law, as the best heroes do. And I know that both Andrew and I can put our trust and the Inquisition's trust in that you, Lee Strahd, hero of Ice... Born? What's the name of this terrible place? Eisenhome is the name of the castle. Thank you, Daniel. Eisenhome <laughs> would uh, would certainly go down in Inquisition history if you helped us out with this, Lee. You know, you're n- he's not wrong. You could get the favor of the Inquisition from this. Oh, okay, okay. Well, I'll try to keep it hush hush. My men, uh, my men may leak something though. I don't. But I'll, I'll try to keep it all on the hush hush. Well, I mean, it's obviously only the men here that know the situation, so I figure keep the men here off the comms and with the Baroness. And if you don't trust them, I could always, and Tomb starts like untying his bow tie. Mm, I, are you trying to be more casual? Yes, I take it you didn't. You know what? I believe you can work with your men and figure this out. I, my my men will be loyal. We'll, we'll deal with this. Okay. Um, so, uh, we'll leave you this in your capable hands. Okay. And we're going to interrogate the kitchen staff. Oh, okay. Excellent. Um, now since we are dealing with potential more invisible threats, uh, Daniel, if you mind, I could play around with your settings and possibly reload your fire extinguisher. We might need it in case we come up against another invisible assailant. Uh, sure. I think we have, like, one more use if we could, uh, get it re-situated. Well, you, you should let me do it, Tombs. I'll do it. Are you sure? I've had quite familiarity with this. You couldn't even get the door open. Fair enough. Thanks for listening to this grimdark tale. With mutant assassins about, it seems this mystery can only get more dangerous. What secrets will our boys learn from the kitchen staff? Tune in next week to find out. Special thanks to Daniel Fernandez for inserting his soul into a servo skull and helping these two as Game Master. I'll be chronicling new episodes of Dark Heresy every first and second Wednesday of the month. And if you want to get your wargaming fix, tune in to Roll to Seas every final Wednesday. If you'd like to download more episodes or check out other similar podcasts, head over to PartialArc.com. There you might enjoy listening to Friday Night Quests, a podcast much like Dark Heresy, but set in the fantastical and equally hilarious world of Dungeons & Dragons. You may even recognize some familiar voices, such as Daniel Fernandez and even Jay Jones along with many more ridiculous and wonderful characters. Definitely check it out. Also, you can email these morons any questions at rolltoseas at gmail.com. Of course, you can always follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and Tumblr, all at PartialArc. Thanks for listening, and don't forget to leave a rating and review on iTunes. You could win a free shipment of wine. We swear it's not poisoned. Like 99%. Goodbye. Goodbye.